we're going to be dealing with a, a number of if statements by the time we get done. So I want you to be sure that you understand that. And remember, I open up my parentheses, I close my parentheses. I must do that. I, it is not optional. You don't see any spaces in there. You just see a straight formula. If, open paren, I2, length of stay, is greater than 3, comma, quote, yes, comma, quote, no, quote, close paren. I open my paren, I close my paren. And then I can copy that formula down, and it will take, it, it, it will tell, it will look, it will interrogate. So the first patient, Dr. Allen's patient, length of stay, three days, review the chart, no. Next patient, five days, review the chart, yes. Next patient, six days, review the chart, yes. I jump down, length of stay, three, no. I hope you get the idea that you see in column K. This formula, the, the formula that you see here, equals if I9 is greater than 3, display yes, otherwise no. Now you might be thinking, well, why did he choose 3? Well, why not? I could choose any number that I wanted to. If I want to say, okay, only show me, only review charts that are that, where the patient was greater than 10 days, no problem. I go back here, I change in my formula, greater than 10 days, I then copy my formula down, and now I've made my chart review criteria much less stringent. The, the, the chart I was reviewing before here is now no longer reviewed. Why? Because I now chose 10 instead of cho choosing uh, 3. It's completely arbitrary. Why did I choose 10? Because I felt like it. Obviously, you'll make your own choices there, but the if statement is really, really important. This is probably next to data validation and the pivot table, which we'll be doing uh, next month as well, are probably the three most underutilized but easiest to use formulas and, and features in, in Microsoft Excel. Before you go on to other statements, other logical formulas, I, what I would do is I would spend a lot of, uh, not a lot, but a little bit of time making sure that you understand the if structure. If cell reference condition agrees, then do this, otherwise do that. And if you think about it, that's kind of like what programs do. You go to use your ATM card and you punch in a, you, you put in a number, you, or rather you put in a card. The ATM machine then interrogates that card. It asks you a bunch of yes, no questions. Do I want my checking or my savings? Do I want, how much do I want? And so on and so forth. The, the statement, the if statement is exactly that, okay? I'm now going to display some of the other columns, okay? Let me unhide these columns. Now, let me hide that one so we don't get too, too discombobulated here. Now, in this case, I now want to, to do a, a age category example. I want to set, based upon the patient's age, I want to set up criteria that allows me to divide my entire list of patients into three groups. I want to take the patients based upon this column, in fact, let me recolor that. Based, I want to take the age column, and I want to be able to say if the patient's age is between, is less than 41, notice I've got, my, I've got a more complicated if statement here. If the patient's age, D2, is less than 41, call it the, my category 0 to 40. Otherwise, the way you interpret that comma is otherwise, if the patient's age is less than 65, call it 40 to 64. And if it doesn't meet any of that criteria, if it doesn't meet what you see there, then call the patient 65. Notice I've got my open parentheses, open parentheses, close parentheses, close parentheses. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to categorize my patients into three groups. Those patients that are 0 to 40, there's one. Here's a patient who's from, from 40 to 64 based upon his age. And then there's another patient who's over 65. Again, why did I choose 0 to 40, 40 to 64, and over 65? Because I felt like it. You make your choices any way that you want. The if statement 
is, in this case, has two conditions. If one condition, actually it has three. If one condition is less than 40, one condition is between 41 and 65, and then the other condition is um, between uh, 65 and older. The, um, and it will display the categories here. We call this, when we put one if statement inside another statement, an if statement, we call that a nested if statement, nested, like a bird makes a nest. And the reason we call it that is because the if statement is actually wrapped around like a within the other if statement in much the same way that a bird wraps the straw, the grass, around in order to create uh, her nest. Okay, let me now show you a more complicated if statement. I see we're getting short on time. We're gonna, uh, we'll take this up until I'm going to get it through as many of these as I can, and then we'll take some questions. Um, let me unhide these columns. Okay, we're going to now get into a more complicated if statement. If the last one didn't give you a headache, then this one certainly will. Look at that. They tell me that, 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 that I, I've been told by the people here at CUNY that if you don't leave with a migraine headache, then they don't pay me. So um, that's why I'm, I'm putting you through these examples. Now, in reality, what I've done here is I've done a, a nested if statement with, five, with, with six different conditions. What I'm doing here is I'm dividing my patient population into several groups, an, a 0 to 17 group. You can see it here. An 18, a group patient based on patient age, 18 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 51 to 60, 61 to 70, and 70 and above. So what I've done is I've created an if statement that interrogates the patient's age, and depending upon how it conforms to that if statement that you see listed in front of you, it will divide the patient into various categories. Again, why did I choose these categories? Again, it was completely arbitrary. I could have chosen um, more granular categories. I could have chosen categories that were less granular. It was all simply arbitrary. Again, don't expect that you're going to get the if statement correct the first time you do it. It takes a bit of working with it. The first time I, I did a, an, an if statement that involved this kind of level of nesting, it probably took me two or three hours to get everything right. If you remember not to put any spaces in, don't put any spaces. That's, I would say, probably um, a good 60% of the errors that I see when people write formulas have to do with the fact that they feel some reason in the middle of that statement you know, to, to go in and put a, put a space there. And sometimes it will correct it, sometimes it won't. And so you've got to be really careful about how you apply um, uh, spaces. The best thing to do is when you're putting in formulas, not put any spaces whatsoever. So in this case, I've divided my data into those subsets, and now I'm going to uh, do, show you one more example.